Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with the Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we got some more 2A news for you. All right, this particular article comes from the Daily Caller, and it was written by Sarah Weaver, and it's called New York Trying to Resurrect Racist Laws to Restrict Gun Ownership. Woohoo! Wow, I have a feeling this is going to be kind of interesting to unpack. So we are going to get into this article. Before we get started, I would like to thank our friends at Arkin Optics for supporting our videos. They, these guys are awesome, and they're putting so much value into their optics. For what they cost, they're packing a lot of features into them. They have an outstanding warranty. They are veteran-owned and operated. These guys have experience in the sandbox as snipers, and they take all that knowledge and put them right into these, these awesome grids and these reticles they're putting in these things, the build quality. You know, we've tested the crap out of these things. We've done a lot of torture testing on the Arkins, and they've held up so well. Uh, if you're looking for a long-range precision optic that doesn't cost a whole ton of money that has a great warranty definitely look into them and check out our videos on the torture test i think you'd be pretty impressed with them so check them out arkin optics and a big thanks to them for supporting our channel and uh helping me get this content out to you all right we're gonna get cracking on this new york is invoking colonial era bans on selling guns to native americans to defend the constitutionality of its good moral character standard for obtaining a concealed carry license uh, it's set to take effect in September. The Supreme Court struck down a provision of the bill in June that required concealed carry permit applicants to demonstrate a need for self-protection. Of course, that involved the Bruin case where uh, essentially, you know, the Bruin changed things a lot. So now New York can't just say, well, we're not going to give you a permit despite the reason. So New York has pivoted in a slightly different way. Gun Owners of America, a gun rights lobbying group, sued New York State uh, police Superintendent Kevin P. Bruin in August seeking to block the legislation. In response to the lawsuit, Bruin's lawyers argued in a court filing that the CCIA's good moral character standard is deeply rooted in Anglo-American legal tradition and should therefore be upheld by the court. From the early days of English settlement in America, the colonies sought to prevent Native American tribes from acquiring firearms, passing laws forbidding the sale and trading of arms to indigenous peoples, the filing reads. Bruins lawyers also note that Catholics were barred from owning firearms, both in England and in colonial America, due to their uh, suspected disloyalty. Hmm, interesting. Uh, gun laws come from a majority trying to suppress or dominate or control a minority, whether it be a minority of Catholics in early America or a minority of Native Americans when there's colonials trying to take over the continent. It is sad, but it's not surprising to witness gun control activists harken back to their racist roots, Craig Deleuze, president and CEO of 2A News Corporation, told the caller. Whether it was the black codes of the post-slavery South or the general granting of uh, discretion to local law enforcement to decide who was of good moral character, gun control has never been about controlling guns. It's about controlling people, Deleuze said. In a response to Bruin's filing, GOA released a brief Monday detailing ways in which good moral character laws were used to restrict both First and Second Amendment rights from minorities. Mm. Georgia's 1840 slave codes, much like the CCIA, prohibited the exercise of First Amendment rights without government licensure, prohibiting any person of color from being allowed to preach or exhort without written license, one of the qualifications of which was proof of good moral character of the applicant, GOA wrote in their response to the filing. Wow. So, essentially, it's wholesale racism. Because who do you want to give the key to Pandora's box to to get to decide who is of good moral character, of good moral standing? Well, if these people have their way, I mean, a state like New York... If they were to say, well, we're not going to deny the permit, but, oh, you have to just pass this this crazy strict protocol of, of questioning, all right? And they're even bringing in the, the, the social media history and everything. And that's something that's been around in New York for quite a while. They'll actually look up your social media history and go, oh, well, this is not somebody we like, so we're just going to, you know, deny them the ability to carry a firearm. So that is an issue, right? If the Second Amendment shall not be infringed, and if the laws must follow the 
As Bruin states, if the law must follow the traditions of the Second Amendment when it was drafted, you know, then it's just crazy to think that these people can literally just engage in blanket racism because that's really what it comes down to, right? It's always been about trying to keep minorities from protecting themselves, but it's also been about trying to keep people who are just disenfranchised in life from protecting themselves, you know? Look at um, the situations with um, the voting tax, the polling tax, okay, which was deemed unconstitutional, all right? So what if... I just decide that, you know, a 10 and a half inch Daniel Defense Mark 18 with an auto sear and, and suppressor and a flashlight is what I decide that I want to protect myself with. So what, I have to pay the crown $200 for the suppressor, $200 for the machine gun, and then have to pay a boatload of money? I mean, it, really all these NFA taxes are for is to disenfranchise folks who may not have the money, right? Rich people can just, oh, whatever. Oh, a machine gun lower costs $35,000. No big deal. Whatever it takes. They have the money. They don't care. Or they just let someone else handle it. They just let someone else handle the security, right? These laws have always been basically infringed on, for infringing on your rights in the name of disenfranchising people that can't afford to pay the gatekeeper, right? What if a short shotgun is what I want in my house, to protect myself? What if a machine gun is what I want to protect myself? What if a short-barreled rifle, whatever that's supposed to be, if that's the preferred tool to maneuver in my house easier and protect my home, then that's what I should be able to have. Now, notwithstanding things like the NFA, polling taxes were deemed unconstitutional a long time ago. But see, these old throwbacks like this, when they start bringing this type of stuff up, that tells you they're desperate. Bruin changed the game. They know it changed the game. They knew that they would be basically in contempt of the Supreme Court if they were to not change their laws immediately. Now, many, many jurisdictions, you know, they didn't want to, of course, but, you know, they did go from, uh, you know, may issue to shall issue. Now, we see in New York as well, it wasn't something that was necessarily covered in this particular article, but New York actually wound up saying, well, okay, fine, we're going to issue carry permits, but you can't carry here, 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 like all these places they listed. So basically, yeah, you have a carry permit, but you can only go from like your house to your car and then maybe a handful of places. If you can't carry all the places that you might want to be, then what's the point of having the carry permit? So that's what's going on right now in New York. You know, not only this application of this racist stuff that they're trying to do uh, and, and, and the snooping on social media to look into your social media history, but they're also just blatantly saying, you know what, you can't carry in all of these random places to the point where what's the point of even getting the permit if you can't protect yourself wherever you happen to be? So wanted to make this quick video and, uh, you know, this is the kind of stuff that, that they're pulling on people. And, um, I, you know, I thought this was a, a pretty direct article and I wanted to kind of share this because it's the kind of stuff people have to deal with. And the more scrutiny that these states have to, you know, put up with under Bruin, the more they're going to dig deep to try to come up with this far reaching stuff. You know, they're digging deep into the box of infringement, y'all. Uh, don't forget, check out Arcan Optics. Really good folks. Big thanks to them for supporting this video. Go over to Ballistic Inc. Pick yourself up a snazzy new t-shirt. That's one way that you can support our efforts. And real quick, uh, we got a little bit of time left here. Uh, I just want to acknowledge, right? Look, guys, we're still making a ton of gun videos, all right? There's just a lot of things going on in the, in the 2A world that we want to share with you guys. So, don't worry. Yes, there's more shooting videos on the way. No, Chad isn't dead. He's around. We've got a lot going on, and I promise you're going to love the direction we're going with what we're doing. I'm not ready to share a lot of information yet, but you're going to love it. We have a lot of content on the way, tons more stuff. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Click that notification bell to make sure you get all of our videos. Have yourselves a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.